But it's family business. That's the point. It's internal. But when somebody from the outside comes in and tries to tries to monopolize on our pain like they always do, monopolize on our arguments like they always do, they make money off our beefs. What? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Gotcha. I'll, I'll put it back on. Basically, they make money off of us arguing. They make money off of us being divided. They make money off of us doing anything negative to each other, around each other, etc. That's what they do. So right now, this is a prime example of how y'all should go ahead and look at who it is that is trying to make money, monopolize, and get benefits off of a black man going at another black man, even though they were simply, the brother was joking. And I didn't take it to be that extreme either, but white folks continue to say whatever. Okay, Rizzo, so, you know, he was joking and you didn't take it to be that extreme either. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to play your game. Uh, let's say Corey said the same shit or maybe not Corey. Somebody else said the exact same shit about you. Would you have the same? Yeah, I, you know, I didn't take it, you know, as that serious or anything. It was, you know, it was just a joke. Would, would, would you have the same nonchalant demeanor and disposition if they said that shit about you? I'm pretty sure you would not. So we can stop playing this game like you don't know why what Corey said was a big deal. Hell, you can stop acting like you honestly think it's a joke. Because Rizzo, you're we know you're intelligent enough to know better. Corey is not that bright. But you don't have the benefit of doubt of, you know, maybe he don't really get it. no. Stop it, Rizzo. Stop it. What the hell they say about us and they get all easy. I talk crazy every week. That's true. It's <laughs> Rizzo says they say whatever the hell they say about us and they get off easy. Last time I checked, niggas go hard on white people on YouTube. I, you know, as being somebody that watch pro-black videos and conscious, you know, community videos, and I know about niggas like Seti and Sonetta and all kind of people, they go hard on white people. And they're on YouTube. Hell, even Corey, all the shit that he say about white people, he's on a white platform every week, even with all the shit that he say about white people. He done called the girl a white bitch about 15 times in his video, but he's still on YouTube. So stop it, bro. People, a lot of people say a lot of crazy shit about a lot of different people. It ain't just white people. That's like they had nothing to do with it. That's, 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 that's some evil stuff. When I saw the headline, I said, who, did, who wrote that? Mm -hmm. Who would write that? Mm -hmm. At first I thought it was a gay man. It it don't matter. What do you mean the, when you first saw the headline, the first thing you thought is who would write that? It don't matter who would write that because if anybody goes and looks at the headline, they're going to see that's exactly what Corey said. So what he is getting to is he wants to know who to blame. That's what he wants. That's, that's what he means to say. When I saw the headline, I wanted to know who to blame for, you know, Putting it out there. Kids come pay to see me because they like what I have to say. Men and women alike, people of all colors, they come see me because I have something to say. I'm saying, but you cannot be from Omaha, Nebraska, and be writing stories about Corey Oakham, the white lady who said you was Darlene's friend. Or Dar Why not? Why not? The last time I checked, I don't give a damn what city or state you from, if you're quoting what somebody said, I don't give a damn if she was from Boise, Idaho. It, it wouldn't matter. She quoted what you said. You don't, you don't need special street knowledge or nigga knowledge or whatever you insinuate. The insinuation is because you're quoting what somebody said as they said it in context. She didn't take none of that shit out of context. She didn't misquote him. No, I, I read the damn article. So you, you can try to play that game with a lot of the other 5150 viewers because you feel like these dumb niggas ain't going to read or research the actual article and they just going to take what you, what you said and allow you to gaslight them, to manipulate them. I ain't the one, bro. I ain't the one. Let's get it. He said you was afraid. Oh, she, because bitch called Darlene. Now he throwing D under the bus. The bitch called Darlene. This is how they do it. I want y'all to be up on this move right here. Because she a white bitch. <laughs> she called Darlene and was like, oh, 
So I heard Corey said this. Is there anything you want to say about that, Darlene? This is how white people set you up. I need you to be aware of this. Because first of all, whenever somebody Caucasian is talking to you and you know you ain't shit, you need to really be on alarm status. If you ain't doing shit big time in this world and somebody white is talking to you, you being shut up, boy. So basically, D ain't shit. So basically what he said in a roundabout way is D ain't shit. And she should have knew the white woman was trying to set her up because you ain't doing shit with your life, D. So why do this white woman want to talk to your ain't shit? This dude is wild, bro. This dude is wild. The fuck is they talking to you for? They don't talk to you otherwise. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. But check this out. So they called Darlene and the bitch said, oh, well, um, do you have anything to say? So Darlene said, oh, no. Well, what is this about? Because Darlene, she wanted to be uh, informed on what it was. I know the bitch played Darlene. I ain't even mad at Darlene. So what Darlene said was, I'll let him know that you're trying to get in touch with him. That gave her the green light because she could say she had a source. What? Okay, let me address this for the slow 5150 viewers in the back because I know it's a lot of y'all. The white girl didn't need a source. Do you know why the white girl didn't need to say she had a source? Because none of the information that she used in her article came from anything that she heard in private. You see? Everything that she used in her article came from Corey's own mouth off of his own platform directly. You know what that means? That means Corey is the source. Rewind it if that didn't make sense to you. Just, just hit the rewind button if that didn't make sense to you. You need a source for private information. So like I was saying earlier, if Corey... Let's say Corey told that to D in private and then D told it to the white girl in private. And then a white girl went and reported it publicly in Hip Hop DX. Then she would be able to say, my source tells me, told me that Corey Holcomb said X, Y, and Z about Rick Ross. But guess what? That ain't what happened. Everything that she needed was provided by Corey himself on his own platform. So stop it, bro, with this. That way she can say that she had a source. You smart, dumb nigga, you. Let's get it. That gave her the green light to be like, so he know that I'm woo woo woo? Okay, whatever, whatever. But then she followed back up with Darlene. So did you get in touch with Corey? And when the bitch said, did you get in touch with Corey? Darlene said, yeah, I'll let him know. That was, her, that was her way of confirming that somebody said something to me about what was happening. I ain't paying no attention because Darlene sent a text. I'm like, well, who the fuck want to know about me? Well, why didn't he get in touch with me? You know what I'm saying? So next thing I know, I'm getting on the airplane in New York, and I see these headlines. I was like, Ooh, oh, oh, who the fuck did this? The first thing I did was find out who did it. I didn't say, oh, let me get in touch with Rick Ross. Oh, let me get in touch with him. I wanted to know who, who did the shit. So I got in touch with them. I bet you didn't hit up Rick Ross when you find out. I bet you did wanted to know who did it. You know why he wanted to know? The first thing he wanted to know was who did it. So he could know who to blame when he went back up on that platform the following week. Or however long after it got out. See, Corey wanted to know who to blame. He wanted to know who to use as the fall guy for what he said. He wanted to know who to point the finger at when he tried to spin this situation. That's why the first thing he wanted to know was who put out the article. Because at the end of the day, the headline wasn't no eye-catching, shouldn't have been no eye-catching shit to Corey because it was exactly what he said. And if you stand on it, then you shouldn't see a problem with it. But this fool don't, he don't realize how shit works.
Bro, you got over 200,000 subscribers and you're a celebrity. So when you make these kind of allegations, yeah, it's going to get back to him. See, he didn't think it was going to get back to Ross. That's all this shit come down to. He didn't think the shit was going to get back to Ross. And, and I've seen this shit happen a thousand times in real life where somebody said some shit that they didn't think was going to get back to the person. And once it got back to the person, all they wanted to know was who told the person so they could know who asked to whoop or who to be mad at <laughs> that the person found out. This dude is wild. Person indirectly. Cause I'm really a mastermind. I just don't brag on it. I had Darlene call her while I was on the phone. Stop it, my nigga. And of course she got on the phone. Oh, hi, Corey. It's a, it's a wacky sounding white bitch. Oh, oh, you, you she talk? look like it. Yeah, I probably don't talk to, I talk to the bitch. I'm like, why you motherfucker? Oh, I ain't trying to put you on the spot. You know how I talk, brother. Yeah. We gonna get into some real stuff in a minute. It's just, this needs to be put out there. Cause I don't want everybody to, just look past what this white lady did. Because it might save some lives later on. Stop looking at these heads. What did she do besides report exactly what the hell you said? And no, you're not showing nobody shit that's going to save lives. You know what to save lives? Learning how to shut up. See, this is not about setting up. It's about shutting up you see because when you know how to shut up you don't give people ammunition or anything to run with you dig what i'm saying that's all this whole situation comes down to shutting up not setting up learn how to shut your mouth learn how to have some decorum about yourself that way, you know, or at least learn how to use the damn word allegedly. Damn. How you on YouTube every week saying what you say about people and you don't know the magic word? Who don't know that? Oh, this is her. Lines that are all over Facebook, Instagram, all them places. They have the power to put that there to play with your feeble minds. <laughs> No, what you're doing is you're trying to play with the 5150, some of them feeble minds, because some of these 5150 viewers are just as dumb. Matter of fact, they dumber than Corey. So you have 5150 viewers that actually bought into this bullshit that Corey was doing, because those are the feeble minds. Everybody else just acknowledge that that's what you said, and you need to stand on it. Don't try to make this a black and white issue and manipulate and gaslight us into thinking some shit is going on that ain't even really going on, bro. Like, and all of the 5150 viewers, y'all should feel some type of way about this because what he's doing is he's insulting your intelligence because but he basically thinks you're dumb enough to buy into this bullshit. And some of them did because some of them, like I said, dumber than Corey. But he think all of y'all are the, the dumbest of the 5150 viewers. And that's an insult to y'all intelligence. Let's get it. The stuff that you really want out there, like when the police jump on the homie who live in the neighborhood and he wasn't doing nothing coming from the stove, that don't get headlines. That's why you got to be like, oh, retweet this, everybody. <clears throat> but the nonsense. Get the hit. Last time I checked, uh... George Floyd, that was the biggest protest in recorded in the history of recorded civilization. People was protesting all over the world for George Floyd. Last time I checked, Trayvon Martin got the headlines. Mike Brown got the headlines. Uh, like I said, George Floyd got the headlines. A lot of these situations got the headlines. And I can't think of no situation of black on black, you know, disputes or beef that trumped the George Floyd situation as it pertains to headlines. I can't think of a situation, of a black on black situation that trumped Mike Brown uh, uh, or Trayvon Martin as far as the headlines is concerned. So again, this nigga's trying to manipulate, trying to manipulate you. Let's get it. Headlines, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So when you read nonsense and, it ain't, and, and, and you know the person ain't got nothing, I ain't, ain't nobody called me about them headlines. 
When, T when we got into a fight on my show, you think TMC called me and got up with me about what happened before they start airing it? They wait. They got the power of the media. Last time I checked, and correct me if I'm wrong, because this was years ago, so I may be, I may not be remembering it correctly, but I could have swore right after it happened, Corey and Zoe went on TMZ and was talking about it. I could have swore. I don't know if they posted it before they went on the show, but I could have swore right after that situation happened with Aries, TMZ, Corey and Zoe was on TMZ talking about the actual situation. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I could have swore that was the case. Let's get it. You have no control over your Facebook like you think. And if you say something real, they will take your little Instagram off and you'll be depressed for years. That's true. That's your attention giver. Very true. That's true. <laughs> did, did I say a name? Kylie Eustace? I just want to make sure I name out there. That's who put that nonsense out there about me and Rick Ross. Of course, my people joking. Well, Rick Ross is the goons. Hey, man, look, that, I, I hope that don't happen, but I got stuff for all that. Put that in the headline. Hey, Kylie, here's a headline for you. I think 80% of men in entertainment are gay. That's a headline for you. Run I wouldn't with that. argue. That ain't got nothing to do with being a black man. That got to do with entertainment. Put me on the spot like that. Don't put me on the spot against no black man. Because I'm going to see through it. She didn't put you on the spot against the black man. You put you on the spot against the black man. Like, this nigga has children that are grown. And he don't know the first thing about accountability. Like, this is ridiculous. This is shameful that a black man said what he said out of his mouth on his platform. And when people start to report on it, he makes it like it's a white girl trying to cause beef between two black men. That shit is shameful, bro. Absolutely shameful. Let's get it. I'm going to see through it. I mean, I'm my own man. Ain't no motherfucker going to whoop my head. You see I'm through what? What do you see through, bro? You said it. You said it. She didn't say it. What What? What do you see through? Again, this ain't no nothing that you said in private that she put out publicly. She quoted what you said publicly, bro. That's, that's, that's what happens with media and journalists and the freedom of press. When you say shit in the public, they're going to cover it. Common sense, bro. Let's Listen, get it. Don't let these white people see y'all off. Dude who retweeted me that shit. She didn't send us off. A white person didn't send us off, nigga. You sent us off. We're reacting to what you said. We ain't reacting to shit that she said. I didn't even know about that article until I seen this episode. So how the hell is she sending us off when we didn't even know about the damn article before you did this episode? Stop it, my nigga. About old girl, I'm saying, man, if, if somebody retreated something to me about you, I'll be like, who did this? Why they doing that? I wouldn't be like, hey, Corey, you crazy, man. You would say anything. So now because you did that, dude who retweeted me that shit, that let me know I can't fuck with you for real. Cause you No, that lets you know you can't fuck with yourself because again, he's reacting to what you said. And if the shoe was on the other foot, you would not say, Who did this? Who did you would only do that? In situations like this, when you want to find out how it got out, who put it out, you want to find out who's repeating what I said. See, you want to know who to blame. If it was the next nigga in that jam, you would not give two shits. You would not be looking for a random person to blame. Stop it, bro. Run with what they saying about me. He ran... Hell, she ran with what you said about Rick Ross. Who was running? Okay, tell me this, Corey. What did she say? What did she say? Name one thing she said personally pertaining you and Rick, Rick Ross. Because the last time I checked, she didn't say shit. She quoted and addressed what you said personally. Stop it, my nigga. Look, why don't you just 
<laughs> Won't you just, you know, patronize one of his wing stops, <laughs> you know, get that big ass breast that you had when you bumped into Stephen A. Smith, you know, and maybe he'll call the lemon pepper steppers off, off your ass, you know, just, just a suggestion. Let's get it. And Rizzo ought to be ashamed of himself. He's talking about people entertained by this nonsense. The not Corey is the nonsense. The nonsense came from Corey. So why are you baffled that people are entertained or shocked or whatever about what he said when he said it, bro? Stop it. That's that's you being manipulative too. You're you're joining him in the manipulation. And for a brother that's supposed to be upright and honest and have uh, uh, discipline and honor and integrity, you shouldn't be doing it, brother. And I don't have no no beef with RZA or nothing like that, but that's unbecoming of of a brother like you, RZA. It's just straight up. That's not that's not a good look, you know. But I ain't gonna hold you up, man. Zion Amari, Real Spit TV. Like, comment, subscribe. And matter of fact, y'all ain't been doing this. I got something for y'all last year. I don't want to rock with the channel. You come on in here, you're not supporting me. You're not thumbs up and you're not commenting, dude. You're not subscribing. You're not sharing the videos, man. So fuck you, man. Fuck you and your grandmama. Oh, and before I forget, just so y'all know, here are the clips. If you didn't see these, are the clips to prove that Corey was not joking. Even though most of y'all already know he wasn't joking. Just to put it in perspective, these are the clips. And we actually got one from 2013 where he exposed it again, letting you know that he was telling the truth. And again, shout out to Black Babble because that's where I got the clip from. So salute to that brother. Go uh, subscribe to him as well. But uh, check these clips out. Now it's too late. You can't have a driver. Corey, Am he's I got three years of probation. Listen, when you have a driver, you are opening up all of your personal business oh, to oh, the streets. Yeah. I found out through a limo driver that a very prominent so rapper Uber. Was, had him pick Uber. him up at LAX. Just like, use Uber. Drive him to the hotel. He's a different driver every time. Hold on, D, let Don't. me say this. Then they sent him to go Don't. get some boy. Don't. Wow. I ain't going to say his name because I still find ways to listen to his music, but it's very hard to listen to his music knowing. Well, what's your favorite record by him? <laughs> What is he looking for? Give me a song in which he guessed. Hey, don't because I say it. Okay, give us a melody. Fuck me. You know I got it. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, man. That's why you don't. See, y'all don't know who that is. I don't know. Yeah, right, yeah, I know who it is. There's enough people, in there there's enough people on the chat that you, from your uh, camp and right. my camp, know who yeah, sing the chorus. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that limo driver, that, that limo driver put him out there. That's why I do not fuck oh, with limo God. drivers. Limo drivers will sell information they know about you to places like TMZ if they feel like they, they want to buy it. In the middle of the interview, he's, middle of the he's interview, like, you look at it, so now, I'll be right back. You know, he's, he's like, like, man, I got to go to the bathroom. And okay, dipped, work, And then there was no explanation. That nigga the... showed up at the 85 <laughs> South Boys <laughs> show and realize ain't none of these niggas gay. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth, Ross. You, you anyway, shit on yourself a little bit, didn't you? It makes me, you it makes me crack up. Because when DC, when DC, young said, boy, how's he just going to disappear like that without saying goodbye? <laughs> so, he was around all heterosexual niggas. Man. Don't nobody say that. I nigga, think. we know what it is, nigga. Y'all motherfuckers get mad at me, nigga. Let me tell you something. If Rick Ross watching this, nigga, let me tell you something. Stop hiring drivers. Drivers always tell on you, nigga. I know what happened at LAX with that boy. Oh, God. <laughs> like this one. I was like, Corey, you know you fucked up. 